describe what you did to the drum track for me. Why don't you read right in my pocket? I knew that I was going to do that for you. I knew it. Oh, First, wait till God, it's one of my favorite South Park it. We've been working on a song that started out in a loop library of music that we've been creating. And last time we practiced it during a live stream and Rob came up with a thing that actually we thought would make a great chorus for the song. But we couldn't record the new drum part yet because we were waiting on a multi-channel sound card to arrive. And then finally, the sound card did arrive. So luckily, soon after that session, we were able to actually hook that up and multi-track the new drum part for the song. It's the, the UMC 1820. And then this is the ADA 8200. Tell me about this stand that you created for the thing. How did you come about that? Part of it was just uh, left over from a high school wood shop and the bottom of an office chair. So that's so, that's the bottom of an office chair. Yeah, it's the bottom of an office chair. And the pipe just happens to fit perfectly on top of it. And then we can and, swing it around to get it the back. Right? So we can rotate it <laughs> for easy access. And after this new sound card was hooked up, we recorded the new drum idea that Rob had. But now with this new chorus, the drums that we had in the earlier part of the song made the whole thing seem too rock. It made it, it lost its original groove. We tried to brainstorm what we could do with the verses to make it kind of have more of a groove part. And a few days later, I was driving in my car and I just had my music on shuffle. And one of the songs that popped up was the song, The Shiznit by Snoop Dogg. And I thought a groove like this might actually work well in the song. So I shared that with Rob and told him to see if he could do something along those lines. So then what Rob did is he downloaded the session from our GitHub files and recorded something at home on his electronic kit that he has. Rob was able to record these drum lines to the actual recording session that we had at home because of a method that we came up with to share and collaborate on files using open source tools like GitHub, Ardor, and Ubuntu Studio. This method of recording remotely was something that nobody else was doing. We were even asked by the people that make the operating system we use, Ubuntu Studio, to talk about it at a summit that Ubuntu itself was having in Prague. The band not only got to play at this summit in Prague, but we were actually asked to explain this method for recording remotely that we use. My mind started kind of running and I'm, I'm thinking like, I wonder if I could do this with music. I wonder if I could do this with the band. So I, I decided to take a look at one of the sessions we did in Ardor. If I were to right click on the main file, the Ardor file seemed like an XML style file. It seemed like it, it was telling the program what to do when it opened it up. It looked like it said like, here's the, here's the track with the name. Here's where the audio file is. Here's what the volume was. It's basically saying like, when you open up, do this. And I'm like, so this is just code. This is just a, a, a sheet, a file that's just gonna change when I move things. So then I said, maybe I could use this with a repository. It's so simple. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it. If anything, I just break one of our songs that we're working on. Changes were there. Not only that, we had added plugins, we had added effects, we had added EQ. Those were all there. They all were doing what they were supposed to do. And the whole experience was just because we're open source musicians, because we use only free and open source software. And during our time in Prague, we actually got to hang out with the people that created Ardor, the recording DAW that we use.
Now, getting back to the drum part that Rob made, Rob explained to me how he recorded the electronic drum part that he wrote. I tracked stereo electronic drums, mm -hmm. kick and snare, and then I threw in a makeshift hi-hat mic'd up. So you had a regular hi-hat, but an electronic kit? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so I did kind of a hybrid electric acoustic. Okay. But listening back, the hi-hat part was really, really stiff, and we thought we should do something about that. Uh, EQing a hi-hat. So what Rob did is he created a new hi-hat part using the kit that he has right here in our studio. So after this, we figured the drums were finished. And the next time we got together, we were listening back to the tracks and Rob actually started tapping something on one of the cabinets that we have. It was during this breakdown part right before the chorus in the song. And we thought it was kind of interesting. So we threw a mic up and just recorded it. But at this point, the song still had no lyrics. So I sat down and wrote out the lyrics and came up with a melody part and decided to record that. You know when it happens, it's always the way the past still gets me today. If I'm thinking, can't leave it behind. I kept so many things that the rest I couldn't decide. Brought it back, thought it would stay, then it ended far. And as I was going over the verses and singing the parts and doing the harmonies, I kept hearing this, this organ line that I thought might work with the song. So I just decided at one point to stop what I was doing and record this organ part. The chorus part was still pretty heavy and we kept it that way, so I decided to record a vocal line that kind of went with that. It would end as it all started out. One was on, another going out. Scattered things from here and there. Then it ended far away. Now, even with the vocals finished, the song still needed something more. So what we did is we had our friend Brian, who has played with the band before, come out and just write a sax part for the song and didn't really give him any direction. We just kind of played the song and had him just record anything that came to mind, just had him try out different stuff, just like we had Eric do earlier when we came up with the guitar parts for the song. And we would just pick what we liked and arrange it in the DAW with the song. Like that. Also, back when we used to jam with Brian a lot, he had this pedal that he would try out sometimes during practice. It was a pitch shifter. We never actually got a chance to use it in any of our songs before, so this time we thought we'd incorporate that kind of sound into his sax part. This whole song just started out as one of the loops 
in a library of ideas that we were creating, something that we did during the pandemic, something that turned into a method that we created that got us flown to Europe to explain how we came up with this method. And then it turned into a song. But recently we just got a message while working on this song. And these loop ideas that we have been working on were actually gonna come in handy for something more.